Testing audio. All right, we're good. And we are also live. So welcome everybody to SSR Tier 2 today. We've got round seven of our very first season with this league. And uh, we're at Monaco today. So should be absolutely amazing. Just getting our little spectator settings up here. And got an 18 car grid today, so not quite a full grid. Um, there are, of course, always going to be one or two people who aren't available. But we still have a smattering of... Great tier two drivers today. Just waiting for a few people to come out of the pits here so we can actually get down to business in the short qualifying session, short structure. So it'll just be one 18 minute se session and that'll make things extra hectic here. So, yeah, the Monaco being such a tight track, so little space, it's gonna make things really difficult for a lot of these guys. They'll go up for flying laps. Here's SSR Joe. Williams, it looks like he was the first out, so he'll have clean air no matter what here. Uh, unless he decides to let someone else pass, but that doesn't look like it'll be the case. Just behind him is Synonymous in the Renault, who unfortunately missed last week's race at Spain due to a scheduling conflict. Yeah, Joe in the Williams, he's, he's, he's doing pretty well right now. I believe he was fourth place at Spain, if I'm not mistaken, and... Um, he is currently rising up the standings. Just bringing up our uh, tier two standings now. You can also see it. You can also see it for yourself at safespaceracing.weebly.com. That is our current website. Oh, oh, Joe Aslett, synonymous passed. All right, so we'll be riding on board here with synonymous for the first uh, flying lap of this Monaco qualifying session, which is set to be an excellent one indeed. Can uh, talk about all the all the standing stuff after this lap from the Renault driver blazing across the pits right now. The only DRS in on the track and coming into Santa about sometimes a third, sometimes a fourth gear corner. Really depends on what tires you're on, but here it's most likely going to be taken in fourth. As now he goes up the hill through Beau Rivage and into Massonet. Tight left hand or easy to understeer in the mid corner. Now through Casino Square, Ooh, lots of undulations around here as we go into the middle sector, starting with Mirabeau. Ooh, very easy to hit the wall on exit or get over. Still looks like Synonymous did there and now down to the Grand Hotel hairpin. And ooh, he's definitely been compromised there. He had to slow down a lot to get around that corner. It's so tight there. As he now goes through Portier and onto the back straight through the legendary Monaco Tunnel. Which has a corner unto itself. Let's go through it there. And now into the Novel Chicane. This is one of the best overtaking spots on the track. Second gear corner and looks like he got through there pretty nicely. Now into Tebak. Nice left-hander here, easy to oversteer to get on the power too early, and now through the swimming pool section, this double, uh, this set of two chicanes, and now into Raskast, the penultimate corner, you can really, or you can theoretically overtake there if you've got the balls, but no need to do that in qualifying, as now he gets out of, out of Anthony Noves, onto the DRS and the power, and he sets a 1 minute 10.1, not too bad for a starter time here, that's certainly faster than anything I've managed in, uh, in Monaco on time trial, but SSR Joe immediately Fires back into Williams with a 1 minute 9.941. And Formula Maxim in the Alphatari unable to match it, but he's on the medium compound tire, setting a 1 minute 12.0. Ten whole dollars comes in, in for Red Bull with a 1 minute 10.9. He was our uh, ten whole dollars our winner from Spain last week. This is our Vex. Uh, make, Vex actually making his uh, SSR debut here in today's Tier 2 race. Driving in reserve for Frisky, who unfortunately will not be joining us today. Uh, despite, yeah, Frisky is currently fifth in the Drivers' Championship for McLaren, so that's unfortunate for him. But uh, his teammate Sam Ken will still be able to pull some good points as well. And keep in mind, when you're in, when there's a reserve driver in your seat for a race, if that reserve scores any points, you'll get half of what you would normally get if you were in that seat for the race. Ooh, there's a yellow flag on the in the Novel Chicane, by the way. Ooh, not sure where the not sure who was involved in that. But uh, yeah, it looks like there was a bit of a pile up there as OTL Krujev is now coming onto his flying lap in the Alfa Romeo. He's also a reserve driver coming in for Bascom 62 today. Bascom has had an excellent run of a couple of races here at Zandvoort. He came in as a reserve driver for Mercedes and ended up in P4, I believe. And uh, yeah, then he got the full-time Alfa Romeo seat and he put it to good use at Spain, scoring good points. 
But now he hands it off to Krujif, who last made an appearance in Tier 2 uh, driving for Haas at Zanvoort. Uh, filling in for, I believe it was AMR Genesis on that occasion, and Genesis again is not here today. Actually, no, I believe he was in for Jamie the G's. That's my bad. And yeah, so you'll notice that a few of these guys, uh, not including Krujif, are on the medium compound of tire, the yellow wall tire, uh, which generally is not the best qualifying tire. The soft, it has the best one lap pace when it's fresh. But at the same time, if, even, if these guys qualify in the top 10, which most of them will, then they'll have to start the race on whichever set of tires that they did their best qualifying lap on. And that, that's where the strategy comes into play. Because if, do you want to start out front on the softs and get a better, have a better chance of pole position, but also have to start on slightly worn uh, tires that won't go as far into the race? Or do you want to start on mediums, take a gamble, see if you can get into the top 10, and then make a, and that would make a one stop much more um, much more likely for you? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of different st and strategy choices that you can uh, employ here at Monaco, but most of them revolve around the general concept of a one-stop. Uh, Monaco is a relatively low tire wear circuit. Uh, a set of the hard compound tires around here can actually last the entire race, although of course mandatory pit stops means no one will really be doing that. As Weighted Zeus is disconnected in the Will the Williams, so we'll try and get him back in here. Hold on, just a moment. And uh, checking Twitch now, we are already up to 13 viewers, so well done guys, we've only just started qualifying and we're already getting some decent numbers pulled in here. And I've given a Zeus an invite back to the game now, hopefully he'll rejoin as soon as possible because he has not yet set a qualifying lap. And Kruger's lap was pretty good it seems, good for a provisional P5 with a 1 minute 11.3. Yeah, we've had some we've had some super reserve driver performances so far this season. Uh, Kruja finished P5 at Zandvoort when he was reserving for Jamie the G. He now dives into the pit lane after his lap. So I expect there to be more of that today. That's uh, the maestro in the racing point. What's going on with him? Looks like he's just on a slow lap right now. He's oh yeah, he's on out lap, trying to improve on his time of a one minute eleven at point three six seven. I suspect we'll get a, quite a few more people breaking into the nines by the end of this session uh, as the track gets a bit more rubbered in, and yeah, hopefully that will be the case. We want to get, we want to see these guys going as fast as possible. We want to see as many guys competing for pole as possible, and uh, I suspect that'll be happening today. Meister just heading through swimming pool now in preparation for his second flying lap. You can actually cut that final part of swimming pool pretty. You could cut it a lot actually. It is. Uh, pretty easy to invalidate your lap there, but it's also pretty easy to gain time by going over the sausage curbs. And uh, you can see Maestro did that there on his out lap. Would be brave enough to do it on his flyer. We shall see. We'll be getting very close to the walls in the exit of Santabot. That's how you get that extra speed out of the corner and up the hill. The Massene now. Ooh, he might have missed his apex there. No, I think he got it. I think he's just taking an alternate line through there and now into Mirabeau ever so slightly wide, but a nice controlled exit, and now into the hairpin, taking it very tight there, onto the power early, taking a lot of, ooh, taking a lot of curb there, I think that might have compromised his line a bit as he goes through Forte now, yeah, that doesn't look like the fastest way through the middle sector, but uh, we'll just have to see how the time, how the time is, and Sam Ken has just put in a whopper of a time, a 1 minute 9.913, that's only a few hundreds ahead of SSR Joe, but it is still good enough for provisional pole. As I don't think uh, the Meister's middle sector is going to set the world on fire, but still pretty solid so far. Oh, we botched it there. Looks like he hit the wall in swimming pool, and that is going to be the end of that lap. Although with we're only halfway through this qualifying session, so he will certainly get another chance. And, and I doubt he'll wait too long to take it. Waited Juice, meanwhile, has rejoined the session, and he is now out for a lap in his Williams. We'll uh, come back to him when he's actually on a lap. Let's just compare for a moment. Let's find someone who's on the medium compound of tire. Here's JSC Bmars in the Mercedes. Oh! And he bonked it. He bonked it there. Oh, there's a Red Bull. There is a Red Bull. That's ten whole dollars. I don't know what happened there. Ten whole dollars parked it up on Casino Square. Maybe he was just trying to avoid another car. It's, looks like Weighted Zeus has gotten a taste of the barriers there in Mirabeau. Yeah, again, Monaco, a very tight track. So, and again, all these drivers, if they're on an in lap or an out lap, they are obliged to move aside and let any car by that's on a flying qualifying lap. And that's very difficult on a track this narrow, with 
so little runoff, so you're going to be seeing a lot of that during this session. Much more, I suspect, Stenner is another uh, super... Actually, no, Ste yeah, Stenner used to be a reserve driver earlier in the season. He, he uh, made his debut in China, I believe it was, and now he is, he's landed himself... Oh! He's landed himself a full-time seat with Haas, and he's landed himself in the walls in the tunnel there, and that's going to invalidate his lap. Probably going to... Slice off a bit of his front wing, too. Yep, there's an end plate missing on the left side, so Stenner's lap is ruined, but he already has a time on the board. 1 minute 11.2, so certainly not the end of the world. Ooh, that's $10 dollars again, I believe. Yeah, he just had to park it up in swimming pool to make room. That's Again, that's how tight it is. There aren't that many alternatives to what you just saw him do there. And, uh, let's see, total 420 in the Red Bull and weighted Zeus and the Williams are the two that have yet to set time, but Zeus, of course, is on a flying lap right now. Ooh, taking it very gingerly through Casino Square. Bonking the wall a little bit. Did he get any wing damage? No, it doesn't look like he's missing an end plate. We go through the hairpin here. Again, very gingerly. Slow, methodical. He's clearly just focusing on getting a time on the board rather than lighting the world on fire. But he's certainly on track for a time right now. If I had to, if I had to pick a place you know, on this track that where it's the easiest to invalidate your lap time, I might say Santa just because of how the, ooh, how tricky the curbs are. He just slaps the wall again, heading into the Nobel chicane. But yeah, it will probably be the Nobel chicane. That might be the easiest place to invalidate your lap time, as uh, he seems to miss his apex into back there, but still getting, still having the car pointed the right way. Ooh. Yeah, this looks like a pretty slow lap. Didn't carry a lot of momentum out of swimming pool, and goes very wide, Raskas, and that's going to lose him an end plate and he's bailed out on the lap now. And if you're wondering why Jamie the G retired uh, in the Haas, you can see he's the only name that's uh, faded and receded on the leaderboard screen. Uh, if you're wondering why he retired, uh, well, he just retired at the start of the session. He was uh, he was expressing doubts about whether he would be able to set a clean qualifying lap, so he has just retired, and he's going to start from the back of the grid, which isn't always the worst strategy, considering how hectic Monaco Turn 1 tends to be. And, uh, ooh, we've got some new followers already. Tufty Candy and Extreme Crazy 100. Thank you both for following the stream. Thanks to you, we are now up to 186 followers on this channel, which is absolutely excellent. SSR isn't even that old of a league, and we are already pulling in some really big viewer counts, some really big follower numbers, and even some subscribers as well. Uh, so thank you all very much for your support, no matter which form it takes, whether it's, you know, bit donations, whether it's just following or viewing the stream. Doesn't matter, anything helps. I'm just glad that you're sticking around to uh, support the channel. Looks like this is our judge coming into the pits, and Synonymous and Weighted Zeus are just coming out of the pits now for their outlaps. Synonymous again already in provisional P3, but Zeus needs to set a time pretty soon here, or he's going to be left out and just going to have to start at the back of the grid if he doesn't do something soon. Now, Monaco, a very tricky track. And uh, Zeus clearly got caught out by that on that last flying lap. But if this session were to end now, here's how it would be. Sam Ken would get pole position in the McLaren. Pretty surprising considering he is not the he's not the fastest this guy on this grid, generally speaking. But he's still very consistent, very quick. Uh, very he does not he's not the kind of guy that just crashes due to an unforced error. He knows what he's doing. And consistency is a really important thing here around Monaco. Consistency and confidence in your car. Those are the main things. Uh, SSR Joe would accompany him on the front row. Session were to end now, followed by Synonymous, Ten Whole Dollars, Odile Kruchev, Stenner, Maestro, Formula Maxim, and the Alphatari, who we actually haven't talked about yet. Maybe Sanderson, Otiel Lugi, and the Alfa Romeo. And, ooh, Total 420 just retired, so I'm guessing he, just like Jamie the G, wasn't actually planning on setting a lap time today. Uh, SSR Vex would, would start 12th right now, followed by Dubsy, Platner, B Mars, AJ Mars, and then total 420, Jamie the G and Weighted Zeus. But Weighted Zeus is looking to fix that. He's looking to go higher up the order as he goes through Sandabot now. Nice and solid through turn one. Nothing too special, but he's certainly keeping a point in the right direction now through Massonet. Looking very fast through there and now in Casino Square. Actually, like a looks like a decent sector one. 18.916. Not sure how that stacks up against the leaders, but I think it, it'll be a bit slower considering Zeus's pace. Uh, so far this season, Zeus currently sits 10th in the driver's standings, tied for 10th actually, 22 points apiece between him and SSR Echo. Uh, Echo is not here today either for Ferrari, and uh, we couldn't find a reserve driver to replace him, so 
That just means one Ferrari will simply be missing from the grid today, which is a bit unfortunate. Ooh, Zeus being very daring in his cutting of the Novel chicane there, but it seems to have worked out for him. As he goes through to back now, this actually might not be that bad of a lap. It looks pretty fast, although these broadcast cameras, it is easy to look fast at Monaco. So we'll see. Ooh, slapping the wall there a little bit on the entry to Raskast, but it doesn't seem to have phased him. And now through Anthony No. Ooh, a little oversteer off the final corner, it looks like. Going up to the line. Ooh, scraping the wall again. That'll hurt his uh, straight line speed. And it's P11. It's a 1 minute 12.698. So it is good enough at least to get him onto row six, which is always better than the very back of the grid. And uh, SSR AJ Mars is currently trying to set a better lap time on the medium compound tire. He's the slowest car to have set a time so far with a 1 minute 16.6. Sure we can do better than that. AJ Mars, one of the one of the faster guys on this grid, I'd say. Currently 52 points, uh, almost even with his teammate B Mars in the championship. Very unsteady through the Nobel through the Nobel chicane there. Yeah, I. That's a pretty low bar for a lap time, for being honest, even on medium tires. So I think he'll improve. And yes, he is six tenths up on his previous lap time, but that would only net that would only give him one one extra position over his current uh, standing right now. So yeah, I think AJ Mars is destined to be outside the top ten here, which would mean his medium gambit has failed. Yeah, he'll only leapfrog his teammate and son actually, B Mars. But he still gained 1.1 seconds on that lap. Maybe if his first sector was a little stronger, he could have leapfrogged Platner as well. But that is not to be, unfortunately. SSR Joe is also on a flying lap. He's trying to reclaim pole position. Actually, Maestro on the racing point. Uh, we did. I didn't see Maestro, but he has apparently set up 1 minute 9.9, .9 and he, that, he's leapfrogged Joe for second place. As a lot of the guys lower down the order retired. Ooh, that was a close call with the Alfa Romeo there, just coming out of the pit lane. But Joe has reclaimed provisional pole. The 1 minute 9.271, despite the fact that he very nearly rammed uh, OTL Krujev there. Still an extremely impressive lap. Of course, that is what you'd expect from SSR Joe. He has been one of the fastest guys. But second at Spain last week, Z one at Zandvoort the week before that. As now, let's find someone else on a flying lap. OTL Lugi is just finishing up his lap in the swimming pool now. Ooh, locking up there. Double lock up. Oh, he slapped the wall, and I'm surprised he didn't lose it. Surprised he didn't lose most of his front wing there. But yeah, that will be the ruin of his lap, and uh, he'll stay P10. Yeah, Monica qualifying very fast, very frenetic, and very little margin for error. Those are the uh, those are the rules of qualifying at Monaco. Synonymous is following those rules so far pretty well. Certainly provisional P4, and he invalidates, so it looks like he will not improve his lap time. There's only 20 seconds left in the session, so he will not have time for another go-round. Platner saying, happy with my strategy. Uh, what what strategy is that, Platner? What are you what are you planning on doing here? Maybe starting on the softs for, and then pitting on lap two for the hards or something? That might not be the best. That might not be the worst, actually. Considering how long the hards last at this track. King Chalupa, 1234, also in chat. He's a tier one driver with Red Bull in SSR. Rip Lugi says, yep, that was uh, that was a bit of a shunt in, on the exit of Raskast for Lugi. Yeah, it, it's, that Raskast is so unforgiving, honestly. The, en the entry is so easy to lock up. Ooh, there's bits of racing points scattered around Mirabeau there. Looks like that's Maestro? No, that's uh, G.B. Sanderson that's had an off there. And there's yellow flags still as, oh, that's an Alfa Romeo going very slow th slowly through Portier. I think that's Otiel Lugi. Medium soft, says Platner. Yeah, that... Monaco is one of the few tracks where you can make a medium soft one stop work. As, ooh, Beanmeister66 just followed the stream. Thank you very much for that, Beanmeister. I know we've got an automated thank you message in the chat for anyone who follows, but I still like to congratulate people on joining this wonderful league community because uh, at the end of the day, the human touch is always nice. King Chalupa now saying maximum P8 on mediums. Wow. Yeah, that, the tire differences, the, the differences in tire performance are really huge. Uh, at Monaco, it's kind of insane. And then again, it is, that's, it's the same for every street circuit, really. Um, yeah, just the way the tire deck works. And uh, it doesn't look like we have anyone left on a flying lap except maybe Maestro. No, Maestro's just put, come into the pit lane. Looks like he invalidated his lap. So that means we are completely done with qualifying. And this is your starting grid here on the left-hand side of your screen. 
Oh, Formula Maxim saying in chat, I feel like I'm in a good spot. Yeah, not too bad, Maxim. P8, P8. And you'll be starting on the medium, so you'll be the highest place medium starter. Yeah, that's not a bad that's not a bad place, actually. SSR Joe getting pole position once again. Uh, followed by Sam Cannon, the McLaren. Surprisingly good qualifying performance from him. Followed by the Maestro and Synonymous on row two. Ooh, great performances from them are... Our winner from last week's ten whole dollars is going to be starting in P5 for Red Bull, just ahead of Stenner and the Haas. Uh, then Otel Krujif in the Alfa Romeo in P7. Another super reserve driver performance today from him. Looks to be in the cards. Formula Maxim behind him in P8 on the medium tire. Watch, so watch out for him. He could be a disruptor here in the battle for the win. GB Sanderson in the racing point and Otel Lugi round out the top ten. So they'll be they'll have to start on the soft compound tires that they've set their best lap on. But everyone behind them, from Weighted Zeus on back, will have free choice of tires. Those those people are Weighted Zeus, SSR Vex, Dubsy, Platner, AJ Mars, B Mars, Total 420, and Jamie the G. And uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a dry race here. Normally we put, have the weather on dynamic, but by popular request from the drivers, we've put it so that the weather will be uh, clear today because Monaco wet at the end of the day is kind of like hell, uh, just with a lot more water. And yeah, there's no formation lap. We do not have formation lap turned on because, uh, you know, there are a lot of glitches that can result from it, including the one that gets you stuck in overtake, in overtake mode. So, yeah, we'll just be getting straight into the racing action. But for now, these guys are on the grid, even though we can't see them. And they are finalizing their strategies, their fuel loads, maybe their front wing levels, stuff like that. That is what they'll be doing on the grid right now. And uh, we'll be doing a 50% length race here, so half the length of a normal Formula 1 race at Monaco. 39 laps. Although, that could take... Oh, SSR Vex has just disconnected. That's not good. Oh, boy. See, this is one thing a formation lap is useful for, because if someone disconnects on the grid, then they have more time to rejoin. But I can easily re-invite him, and I have just done so, so hopefully he'll rejoin us as quickly as possible so as not to get swamped. Yeah, SSR Vex qualified 12th for McLaren, and here we go, here we go, we're going to five red lights. And away we go. Looks like a good start from SSR Joe. Yep, Sam Ken getting bogged down ever so slightly. Ooh, Maestro trying some heroics in descent. Devon, oh, there was contact there. I think Sam Ken might have lost a bit of front wing. Slap the wall in the exit of turn one as Maestro goes through. Maestro into second for Racing Point. What a super... What a superstar for that man. Synonymous as well up to third, and Sam Ken is the biggest loser here, down to fourth place. The question is, does he have front wing damage? He's not missing an end plate, so it might just be very minor damage. We'll, we'll have to see as the race progresses. Ten hold dollars behind him in fifth, just holding station, followed by Stenner, Kruge, of Maxson, Sanderson, and Lugi. The top ten. Oh, there's a huge traffic jam in the Lowe's hairpin. That was Otel Lugi going super slowly there. Who has front wing damage? Who has front wing damage? No one seems to be missing any end plates, which is actually very surprising. As they all go through the tunnel here. And as Sarjo is carving out a nice little lead here early on, trying to get out of the DRS range before the start of lap three when DRS will become available to all these drivers. One second lead to second place on the first lap, and Total 420 has already gotten a time penalty for corner cutting. Good start to the Red Bull draws on the attack, and the safety car is out. What's happened there? Sam Ken seems to be pitting for a new front wing. Yep, I knew he had damage at the exit of turn one. I knew it. And he pits onto another set of soft compound tires. He's got the tire fitted graphic. Yeah, the safety car has been deployed, and that could turn strategy upside down here. Sure, what the safety car got brought out for? Maybe total for. No one's no one's retired, so I'm not sure why the safety car has been deployed. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But after that very hectic lap one, SSR Joe is out front, followed by the Maestro in the race of point. Ten synonymous, ten all dollars, and Stenner is the top five. Stenner drove for Ferrari last week at Spain, and he ended up on the podium in P3, so he'll be looking to repeat his performance today. Looks like Joe has the revs glitch, so let's uh, get away from him for now. Ready to get forward with Maestro in the racing point. This guy got a blazer of a star. I wish I wish we had instant replay here. Unfortunately, we do not. 
Um, but yeah, that was an absolutely excellent race start there for the Racing Point driver that you would want to, I'm sure he'll want to watch over and over again on his little highlight reel. And considering that, uh, considering that no one's actually retired, I suspect the safety car will come in fairly soon, I, maybe at the end of lap number three. Uh, so Total 420 gets a time penalty for track limits warnings under safety car. So I think that means he already has six seconds worth of penalties in the first two laps. So things are really not going his way today. And is he missing an end plate? He is missing a front wing end plate. He's only just Total 420 has only just pitted for a new front wing, and he's already lost an end plate on his new one. So, oof, that's a, it's a dreadful start for Red for the Red Bull driver. Ten whole dollars, his teammate up in fourth though. So. Not all is gloomy for the Red Bull pairing. And SSR Vex is disconnected again, although thankfully this time it's under safety car, so we won't lose track position. Come on, Vex, your connection is not that good. Get back in here. Now then, once again, we are just waiting for the race to get back underway. It's ten whole dollars you're watching in the Red Bull Racing Honda car. I suppose while we're under safety car, might as well give you guys a, an update on our current championship standings after six of 22 rounds have been completed from Australia all the way through to Spain. Ten whole dollars currently leads the Drivers' Championship and by some margin for Red Bull with 111 points. Sam Can is in second with 72 points, followed by SSR Joe with 71 points. Synonymous in fourth with 70 points at the moment. Frisky, the McLaren, currently has 64 points. That's good for fifth place, although he is absent today. With SSR Vex taking his place instead. You see B Mars is in sixth, followed by his Mercedes teammate SSR AJ Mars, with them having 57 and 52 points, respectively. GB Sanderson and Maestro have 35 and 33, respectively, for, for Racing Point. And Wade Zeus and Williams is in P10, tied with, with SSR Echo and the Ferrari. They both have 22 points. That's Stenner and the Haas with 21 points to his name currently. So that is where things stand. As for the constructor standings, McLaren currently lead, with also by some margin, with 136 points. Second is Mercedes with 109, followed by Scuderia Ferrari with 100 points. In third, then Racing Point and Williams currently are tied for fourth with 93 points apiece. Then Red Bull is behind them with 86 points. Uh, Renault is in seventh with 76 points. Then Haas with 73 points. Uh, and then AlphaTauri is some ways back with eight, with just 18 points. And then Alfa Romeo is uh, in dead last at the moment with just eight points to its name. If, it, if you have any questions about the championship standings or about the race or about or about what we're doing or about how you can get involved in the league, please feel free to ask them, ask them in chat. I'm paying attention to chat as much as I can. I know we've got 14 people in here. I'd love to uh, hear from some of you guys about what you'd like to see and if you'd like to join us over at SSR, and the safety car is in this lap, so I will shut my lips about, uh, oh, five second penalty for SSR joke, severe collision with Maestro, I suspect that'll be appealed in the steward's office and possibly removed, but uh, Joe is slowing the pack down as the safety car dives into the pit lane, right through Anthony Noakes, good exit, and he's already restarting very early now, Save, he's saved his overtake mode, so he is going to get a good run down the pit straight and into turn one now, what's going on behind them, who's anonymous right in the back of Maestro, ten old dollars, Fending off Stenner. Looks like everyone's getting through Sandoval okay at the moment. Ooh, Plattner and Sam Ken side by side. Sam Ken getting jostled around even more. Started second on the grid. He's now down to P12. For McLaren. To be fair, he has... Ooh, he has pitted and he might have to pit again after that. Jeez. 
Yeah, he might have gotten a bit of front wing damage there. I can't actually see if he has it. No one plates missing. So hopefully... Ooh! Side by side. Dubsy and OTL Lugi. Ferrari and Alfa Romeo getting very nose to tailie there through the hairpin. And ooh. That Dubsy almost loses another place to be Mars, but not quite. As now the Meister gets a three second time penalty for multiple track limits warnings. And SR Joe has already pulled out a two second gap to the Maestro. He is just flying on another plane of existence right now as Ten Hole Dollars gets a penalty. I wonder if he's pushing his tires too hard and maybe that'll come back to bite him later in the stint. But right now he is cruising. Safety car, the safety car has not phased him one bit. Anonymous seems to have fallen behind uh, second place Maestro ever so slightly. As this is our just the fastest lap in one minute, 14.1. Ten Hole Dollars is currently hanging on to fourth from Stenner. Now it looks like there is a bit of a train forming behind Ten Hole Dollars at the moment. It's just to give Stenner, Krujev, and Formula Maxim now, who's having a decent restart for Alpatari. We're on board with Formula Maxim now. Again, he's the only car in the top ten to have started on the medium compound tires. So he'll be going longer into this race. And any track position he gains now is just going to be icing on the cake he will be able to go that much longer. Will Maxim currently chasing down OTL Krujic in the Alfa Romeo. Alfa Tauri versus Alfa Romeo here. The two teams are currently ninth and the last in the constructor standings. Looking to remedy that today. Maybe Sanderson, meanwhile, in the racing point, currently not, not seeming too racy, just hanging on to the back of this train right now. He's actually catching up ever so slightly to this train, but Gonna be, uh, it's going to be a big ask for him to make any moves. Behind him, AJ Mars, currently in ninth, running his own race at the moment. Ooh, actually, he's weighted Zeus, catching up to him a lot. Zeus on the soft compound tires at the moment, so that w might explain his, uh, what seems to be an increase in confidence compared to the Mercedes driver. His DRS is now enabled, as it's been two laps since the safety car restart. Yeah, AJ Mars seems pretty slow. Maybe his medium tires just don't inspire as much confidence in him as the softs would. on the attack at the moment. What's going on further back in the field? Oh, OTL Luki and Platinum are dueling over 11th place at the moment. Keep in mind, SSR has a unique point system that rewards the top 12 with points. Uh, so the so Platner, if, if the race ended now, he would get two points, and OTL Luki would get one for Alfa Romeo. Uh, SSR Zampa, our current league owner in the chat, uh, saying, I dipped out, what did I miss? Ah, well, safety car on lap one. No surprise there as Lugi gets a time penalty for blatant corner cutting of the hairpin. Uh, but Joe leads after getting pole, and Maestro has had a superb start, up to second from a, from P3 on the grid. And behind him, Synonymous, ten whole dollars, and Stenner. But really, Joe's driving on another plane of existence right now. As I said before, he's pulled out another four tenths on Maestro in the last couple of laps, and Stenner gets a time penalty now for warnings. And yeah, total 420 is not at the best start. Neither has the Mc neither of the McLarens. Sam Ken uh, is down to 17th from P2 on the grid, and SSR Vex has been having some serious connection issues. So that is what has happened so far. Vex uh, qualified P12, but due to his connection issues, he is having to claw back a lot of ground currently. Probably 20 seconds behind his teammate, Sam Ken who seems to have made the wrong decision by pitting under the safety car there for, uh... Yeah, he's made he's already made two stops in the race, actually, because Sam Ken, when the safety car came out at the end of lap one, he pitted for a new front wing and a new set of soft tires. Ooh, but he's at the fastest lap of the race there, 112.6. That is... That would make him the fastest car on the circuit right now. Although I do think it may... It did not make any sense for him to pit a second time onto these medium compound tires. Why the safety car? Everyone's still racing, it seems. Yeah, that's what I wondered, because no one has retired so far, as you can clearly see. Uh, I guess Total 420 was stopped on track briefly after, I think, he might have Austin Powers himself somewhere, I, d I don't remember, but, uh, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird race so far, as SSR Joe, uh, he, his gap to Meister seems to have stabilized now, but it's not getting any bigger. Looks like he's staying in the 2.3 to 2.5 second range for right now, well outside of DRS range, is Hotel Krujev. Makes a move on Maxim. No, Krujic has dived into the pits, as has Stenner. So some of these guys are going to be making early pit stops here off of the soft tires, which are probably falling off around this point in the race, and they're going on to the mediums. Trying to stretch the mediums to the end of the race, maybe early on a two-stop. If you're going to do a two-stop, you'll want to do it with two softs and one medium. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, it does seem a bit early if you're trying to 
if you're trying to go onto the mediums to the end of the race. 30 laps, 25 laps on the mediums, fine, chill, it can do it. But 30 is a bit of a stretch. Uh, Stunner pitted onto the hard compound of tower. That's exactly what I would expect from someone pitting at this point in the race. A lot of understood for Casino Square there on the cold tires. Invite, please, for Platner. Oh, I didn't even see the notification the Platner had lagged out. But you will most certainly get your invite, good sir. Yeah, it looks like multiple drivers are having connection issues. <laughs> it seems to be mostly affecting the Renault-powered car. The SSR Bex and the McLaren, and of course, Platner in the works Renault now. Oh, yellow flag, AJ Mars! AJ Mars in the exit of Portia has just bottled it. I don't really have any other terminology for that, but he's fallen from 9th down to 11th, giving three positions to Krujif and Platner. And Jamie the G now in the Haas, currently in the points in 12th. And there's another yellow flag in the middle sector. I'm not sure what that's for. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, side by side, Jamie the G and Sam Ken. And Sam Ken is currently a man on a mission. He's, he's, he has the fastest lap of the race right now. And now a very dicey overtaking the back there. And uh, Sam Ken is moving right up the order. Ooh, AJ Mars. AJ Mars bonks the wall there on the exit of Raskast, and I guess he's got some front wing damage because he dives straight into the pits. As is Weighted Zeus, but that is a scheduled pit stop for Weighted Zeus. And Williams pitting onto hard tires, it looks like. Ooh, he's lost his front wing. Oh, no wonder he's pitting now. He's pitting onto the medium tires, so clearly these guys seem to be confident that they can go onto medium tires and stretch them more than the 25 laps prescribed by the game. That is very interesting to see. As Platner and Krujev continue to battle, and Platner has uh, retaken control of his car, so he will be able to continue the fight against the Alfa Romeo. If, that is assuming the Alfa Romeo doesn't just waltz away into the distance. Which he hopefully doesn't, because battles are always nice. They always enhance the quality of a race. But Sam Ken is catching up for both of them, the Renault and the Alfa Romeo, and he has uh, already made a pit stop, unlike Platner. Actually, no, I believe Platner pitted on lap one for mediums. Um, yeah, either way, Sam Ken currently slicing his way through the field. I, I remember Fernando Alonso had to do it at Monaco 2010 in real life, where he started from the pit lane, ended up in P5 that day. As well, Sam Ken's right on the back of Platner now. Who, who, who is he going to try something into Anthony, Anthony Noggs? No, that'll be that'll be a suicide mission. But he's going to get DRS in the pit straight. Ooh, side by side there. Platner almost shoves him into the wall. That the stewards might have a look at that one. Sam Ken gets by on the pit straight with DRS. Surprisingly, even though the pit straight is a DRS zone and the only DRS zone on the track, you don't see a lot of overtaking happening on that part of the track because it's just such a short straight. You can't really get get up to speed that much. Sam Ken now into P8, but he's going to have to claw back five seconds if he wants to get to OTL Krujev in front. It's Stenner in the Haas at the moment. Looks like he's running, kind of running his own race. Synonymous is being kept at arm's distance, 1.6 seconds at the moment. And he's well behind Formula Maxim, who's now up to P4, split by virtue of staying out on his current set of tires and really staying out of trouble. Uh, a lot of these guys, you saw, we saw Wade to Sam Ken... Uh, AJ Mars, they've all had to pit due to front wing damage or something else, and uh, that's cost them a lot of track position, but Formula Maxim hasn't done that, as this is our Joe now pits. Joe pits onto the medium compound tire, so he's feeling confident in their ability to last to the end. But yeah, Formula Maxim just really sticking it out there, keeping his nose clean, and that's really making him a shoe in to win here. He can go into the race so much further than 10 whole dollars in the Maestro ahead of him. So he'll have clean air galore, and that should pay dividends for him in his, bat in his battle on the alternate strategy against the other three front runners. That be those being Ten Whole Dollars, the Maestro, and SSR Joe at the moment. Joe coming out in a comfortable P4 ahead of Synonymous, who's now uh, overtaken Stenner. Since Has Stenner pitted? No, Stenner made a mistake. Stenner made a mistake. He, he was 1.6 seconds ahead of Synonymous. Now he's seven seconds behind him. So he must have had a spin there of some sort. And Sam Ken is now right on the back of him for P7. Ooh. That is very close to the hairpin. That could have ended very badly for the McLaren driver if the Haas had just braked ever so slightly earlier. And it looks like Sam Ken's going to be able to get it done uh, through the tunnel and into the Nobel chicane. He's, he doesn't have too much ERS to work with here. Which is, ooh, center doesn't have that much more, though, and he scrapes the wall in the tunnel, and that's not going to help him. And Sam Ken gets by into P7. A little lockup, but nothing too bad. And, ooh, pit stops. Ten whole dollars is onto the medium tires, as is the race leader, Maestro. And he, ooh, Maestro has to pit for a new front wing. He was nursing front wing damage there, so props to Maestro for staying out in the lead that long with damage. Or at least staying ahead of uh, Ten Whole Dollars. 
And there's yellow flag now in sectors two and three. Who's had an off? Who's had an off? Ooh, I think it was Platner. Platner's had an off. He's out. He's going very slowly indeed. And he's missing a lot of his front wing. Yep, that is not looking good for the Renault driver. He said he said in Twitch chat earlier that the medium soft strategy is going to be the way to go. Uh, but it looks like that strategy has been thoroughly compromised by whatever mistake he made there. And he's going to go onto the hards now since he does seem to be out of fresh sets of medium tires. Ooh, Bimar is also pitting for a new front wing. Mercedes. I think he had a five-second penalty to serve there as well. Pitting onto the mediums, actually. So yeah, I'm not sure why Bimar's had that five-second penalty. Maybe a collision out of the during the safety car period, but... Here is your leader, Formula Maxim. He does not have to pit anytime soon. He can take these medium tires pretty long into the race. 25, 25 laps, I'd say. Will most likely be the magic number. Uh, Dubsy. Wait, is Dubsy disconnected? All right, I'm going to give Dubsy an invite here. A lot of people having connection issues. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I've been the lobby host for the last few races, and there were... And the connection problems were nowhere near the, the scale at Zandvoort or at uh, Spain. All right, now Dubsy apparently has been waiting for ages, so apologies to Dubsy. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't notice that he's uh, that he's disconnected, but thankfully Dubsy is still in the points at the moment. Oh, just as I say that, he's getting overtaken by Hotel Luki. And yeah, hopefully we'll see Dubsy retake control of his car here pretty soon because ooh, he, his AI is going wheel to wheel with weighted Zeus at the moment. Oh boy, he's falling. He's falling quite a ways back. We only have the AI difficulty on 41 here, so yeah, the AI cars that take over when the when the drivers disconnect. The AIs are not very formidable right now. That's what we have them set to. And yeah, we'll just take a look at the Ferrari here. Wait for him to uh, rejoin and take part in the race once again. Oh! Looks like Weighted Zeus went into the wall there, but I guess that was just a bit of lag. But it looks like Dubsy still is not retaking control of his car. So we'll just have to wait. Yeah, well, hopefully Dubsy will retake control. But we've got to move on with our commentary here. Formula Maxim still out in front. He's got a 5.6 second gap to SSR Joe at the moment. Uh, the average time loss for a pit stop here at Monaco is around 20... 21, 22 seconds. So if he came out of the pits right now, he would probably come out around P8, uh, just, by, just in front of GB Sanderson, maybe. Uh, so, but he, he wants a bigger gap than that, I'm sure. So he'll be pushing as hard as he can here to get the track position he needs and so he can pit onto the softs and take full advantage of them in clear air. As we're on to lap 15 of 39 now, but Joe is actually gaining at the moment. He's been gaining a lot of time in these last few laps. He's gained... 1.2 seconds on this lap alone, so don't count the Williams driver out at all. He's still the leading driver on the uh, on the main strategy, that is, starting on the soft strategy. But he's still got the rev limiter glitch, so let's not ride on board with him, because that's going to be ear-piercing. And let's check in with Dub CC if he's retaking control of his car, and indeed he has. Wonderful. So Tio Luke gets a time penalty there for track limits. Coming out of the pits, actually, onto the hard compound tires. So, yeah, a lot of unscheduled pit stops all around for these guys. So, Ruby seems to be <laughs> very devoid of ERS at the moment. P pushing hard on his outlap. And there's blue flags now. Blue flags being waved for Luby. As he's the third car to be lapped so far by the leaders. So, unfortunate for him. As Formula Maxim continues his charge through the field of lap cars. That is... Currently ahead of him. Let's see on the mini map. Who does he have ahead of him? Platner is going to be the next one up the road to lap. You can see him just coming out of the chicane there. So he's not too far away. Thankfully, lap cars are ghosted on the current lobby settings that we have. So Renault will give the Alphatari no trouble whatsoever. And Formula Maxim can continue with his race. Yeah, Formula Maxim taking it very gingerly through the swimming pool chicane there. Wonder, gotta wonder, is he nursing a little bit of front wing damage? Is he just trying to conserve his tires for them to last as long as possible? I'm not sure. I am not sure. As Dubsy pits onto the soft compound tire now, I'm not sure what he's doing there. The softs will certainly not last 22 laps to the end of the race. That is a safe thing to say. 
But yeah, SSR Joe is taking, is chomping at the bit here to get at Formula Max. I mean, la uh, the, at the start of last lap, the gap was 3.7 seconds, I believe. Now it's down to 1.8. Jeez. He is just monstering the AlphaTauri driver. Again, Joe driving on another plane of existence at this early stage of the race. Although we're not that early anymore. We were only, uh, we we're only in lap 17 of 39. Very close to that distance, though. As both of these guys come up on the lap car of Platner and the Renault ahead, that is not for position. And there's a yellow flag now in Sector 2. Oh, and it's B-Mars. JOC B-Mars has spun it at Mirabeau. He has pulled a Nico Rosberg in the same car that Nico Rosberg... Uh, not the same car, but for the same team that Nico Rosberg won the World Championship in. And yeah, not a good day for the Mercedes driver. Not a good day for a lot of drivers, really. Uh, total 420 starting at the back of the field, having a lot of offs, ca causing a safety car, I believe. And... Uh, well, he's in 10th now just because he hasn't had much happen to him recently. But I, I don't think I can name very many cars here who haven't had at least one unscheduled pit stop. Oh, that's a big wall slap for B-Mars. Peace. And uh, he's well over a lap down on the levers now. Yeah, Formula Maxim hasn't. As our Joe hasn't. Ten whole dollars has not. And Maestro hasn't. I, I think the top four are the only ones right now to have not made an unscheduled pit stop. And there's yellow flag now in Sector 3. Who's that for? Not sure. Let's go back to the leading battle, because SSR Joe is now within us. It looks like we've got some camera glitches here, but SSR Joe is now within a second of Formula Maxim. Well within a second, in fact. As now there's another yellow flag at second. Do we know the origins of that? No. Ooh, on board with SSR Joe now. Ooh! Formula Maxim is a bit squiggly out of Portier. He's going to give Joe the opportunity he needs. Ooh, and, yep, you don't. Two does not go into one in the tunnel, and Formula Maxim is going to have to back out there. And there's a virtual safety car. What's happened? There's the yellow flag in sector one and two, so maybe it was DMARS again? I'm not entirely sure. There's someone in that general part of the track around Mirabeau. But yeah, the BSC has been deployed, so all the cars will now drive to a delta time for now. Uh, the field will not get bunched up, unfortunately, so BSCs do not cause uh, the same level of excitement as, as full safety cars do, but. Now these guys will get back up to racing speed as soon as possible as SSR Vex pits onto the medium tires there. All these guys trying to gain an edge now with, with uh, fresher tires. Trying to get it at a reduced uh, price and track position now that the PSC is out and everyone is going up quite a lot slower than they normally would be. Uh, Tita 1709 is well, rooting for OTL Krujev. Vamos Kruj. And uh, yeah, Krujev not doing too badly right now. Running in at P6. Zampa saying, everyone's still racing, though. Yeah, that's true. The VSC, we have had a full safety car, we've had a VSC, but we have not had anyone retire. That is that is excellent. And GB Sanderson now is at a drive through penalty for speeding under VSC. That is, that's huge. Sanderson was running eight. He, was, he had a great chance here at points. Solid points. But now he's having to serve a drive through penalty for not adhering to the Delta time. And he doesn't serve it here. He doesn't serve it here. He, he pits for tires and a new front wing. So we'll have to come back into the pits again next lap and serve the drive through penalty and that's going to be especially damaging to him now that the VSC has ended the Formula Maxim gets a 3 second time penalty for corner cutting and Maxim's going to pit now and he's pitted onto the hard compound of tires so clearly it seemed like he, he knew he was losing time there on the mediums uh, and he couldn't stretch them any longer without losing just that much more time so he's taking advantage of the VSC pitting onto the hards and just trying to uh, go to the end of the race yeah, to be fair to be fair to him, Hards will certainly do a lot better over a 20-lap stint around Monaco than the Softs will. He has made the best strategy call that he could in that situation. This is Formula Max. I'm currently running in P5. He does not have to pit again for the rest of this race. So everyone now has made at least one pit stop. No one is currently on the soft compound tire. McLaren's there ghosting into one another. Sam Ken and SSR Vex. Vex, though, is lapped, so Sam Ken certainly having much better fortunes than his teammate this race, although or although Sam Ken's fortunes haven't been that good. When, we, when you think about it, he got swamped at the start, then he hit it early, and that didn't turn out to be a very good call for him, but he's sliced his way through the field now, and he's back into P4, albeit on very old medium compound tires. Watch some battles unfold on the track here. Ten whole dollars still being harried by the Maestro at the moment, and Dubsy has retired. We've got our first retirement of the day. That's Dubsy in the Ferrari. Has he? Looks like he's retired on track. No, he's in the pit lane. Never mind. He has. 
indeed retired in the pit lane. No, that's a racing point coming out of the pits. Jimmy Sampson was serving a drive through penalty there, and that's really been damaging to him because he's now a lap down. Although he is still in P9, as Total 420 now gets a time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Oh, Total 420, after just two laps on a set of medium tires, needs a new front wing. We're going to pit onto the hards now, hopefully go to the end of the race. Yeah, a lot of these guys just making unscheduled pit stops just because of unforced errors, really. It's so easy to make unforced errors around here that make you slap the wall and get your front wing damage. And the guys who are able to be consistent and avoid front wing damage, even if they don't have the best ultimate pace, are going to come out on top. And that's what we're seeing with SSR Joe, with 10 whole dollars, with Maestro, with Formula Maxim, even. And you cannot be successful at Monaco unless you're able to avoid those little mistakes that cost you so much time. SSR Joe, as I've been saying, as I've been saying, driving on another plane of existence. He, his gap to 10 whole dollars in second now is about three seconds as there's a yellow flag in sector two and there's that now. Going slowly. Not sure what's happened there. No, someone's going slowly late further up the track. Hold on. Total 420. Oh, Total 420 is spun in Casino Square. He was stopped on track for a moment there. That must have been scary to anyone coming through that part of the circuit at that point. JSC Beamar is getting a penalty now for track limits. In sector 3 now, there's the yellow flag, and there's Nelfa Romeo going slowly. I think that's Lugie. It was indeed Lugie, but it uh, looks like he's got it together, whatever it was, but does he have front wing damage? No, it doesn't look like he has any visual damage, at least. So I'm not sure what that yellow flag was for, if that was the case. Maybe it just got held up by the Constantino effect. And SSR Joe gaining another four tenths on ten whole dollars this lap. Up from 2.9, down to 3.5. He's gaining hand over fist on his rivals. Looks like we could see the second win in three weight in three races from the Williams of SSR Joe. Ten whole dollars in the Red Bull, our championship leader, has really been the only guy that can keep up with him in these last few races. But uh, even he seems to be feeling the heat from Joe today. He's just not. He doesn't. He, he's not making mistakes. He's not making unforced errors, just like Joe. But he doesn't quite have the same ultimate pace. Right on board of the Red Bull driver. He's currently on nine lap old medium tires. How do they feel in a race pace setting? Yeah, because in qualifying or in time trial, you, you go into seventh gear even before the start, even before the start finish line, but there he barely reaches seventh at all on that straight. As Vex gets a penalty now for track limits warnings, we continue to ride on board with the man in second place. Ten whole dollars, and there's a yellow flag at sector two, and there's a Haas parked on the apex of the Nobel chicane, and it's Stenner. Stenner is spun. Stenner was running in the top five, who was avoiding the unforced errors so well, just like his competitors at the front. He's now made a mistake of his own in the Nobel chicane, and it's cost him a part of his front wing, it looks like, and it's cost him a hell of a lot of time in track position as he loses out to Synonymous and OTL Krujev. Uh, Echo 3x3 is now joined. What's going on with him? Echo set. Echo is our full-time Ferrari driver that's missing today. Not sure why he is. Uh, not sure why he's here. He said he couldn't make it. But yeah, he's in the lobby now. Maybe he's just here to spectate. If that's the case, then uh, I welcome you, you Echo. Uh, welcome to the party, even if you're a little late. And ooh, Stenner. Is that Stenner? No, that's Jamie the G. Jamie the G's a lapped ghost car there. Synonymous getting very close to the wall on the exit of the, on the, exit of the Nobel chicane as Zeus gets a time penalty. Yeah, everyone seems to be running their own races right now, settling into a stint. Settling into their stints, trying not to make mistakes. Even ten whole dollars is no longer under pressure from uh, the Maestro for the time being, as that gap has been stretched out to roughly one and a half seconds. Yeah, no one within a second of anyone else right now. These two cars are the closest of anyone in terms of who's fighting for position. The two that are battling for P2. See how slow they're going through this section. Lowe's hairpin. Oop. Portier <laughs> has 10 whole dollars clips it there. Yeah, they just don't want to hit the walls. That's the tightest section of the track, so really don't want to mess up as they go now into the Nobel chicane before they hit the fastest part of the track coming up here with the back and the swimming pool and the swimming pool complex. Now you can tell, SSR Joe just has so much confidence in a race pace setting here at Monaco, and I'm not sure where it's coming from compared to his rivals. He's just on another level. 
I've been saying it time and time again, but only because it's true. He's been ditching the rest of the field. With, and with just 15 laps to go, there's really only one thing that can take this race win away from him, and that's the, and that's a safety car. And to be fair, that is certainly a possibility. A Monaco safety car... <laughs> Monaco and safety car goes together like you know, peanut butter and jelly. We already had one at the end of lap one, even though no one tried to... No! Joe's made a mistake. It's only a small mistake. He, he recovered from it well, but yeah, he went he went in a bit too deep in Mirabeau, and that's really the first major mistake I've seen from him. And it's lost him about six-tenths of a second, seven-tenths now to ten whole dollars behind. So slow and steady wins the race, question mark, for ten whole dollars? We'll have to see. These two championship rivals may still be on a level playing field here. We'll see. Joe's advantage might not be total. Uh, Zampa saying in chat, Joe and Williams' cars are usually a bad mix. But what makes you say that, Zampa? Again, we are on equal car performance here, so it doesn't matter which what machinery everyone has, because it is the same for all the drivers. The only thing different is the setups and uh, fuel loads. As Maestro now pulls is picking up the pace, and Maestro is back within a second of ten whole dollars, and he's going to get DRS down the pit straight. With racing point driver going on the attack once again. Let's go on board. Zampa saying he crashed out of his last three races and ten for the win. No, Joe finished. What are you talking about? Joe finished second in Spain and won at Zandvoort. He didn't crash out of those races. Well, I guess we'll have to see. Joe still might crash out of this one. We'll see. If he, if he hadn't slammed on the brakes there at the ex, on the entry to Mirabeau, he might have uh, crashed there and been out of the race, but that did not actually happen to him. As Weighted Zeus makes a pass for the final points paying position. Weighted Zeus getting by AJ Mars, and AJ Mars appears to have some front wing damage. Very slowly they're through swimming pool, and yeah, he's got major damage. That looks like maybe red damage on the right side, and at least orange on the left. And ooh, JOC B Mars becomes our second retirement in the Mercedes, and he's retired in swimming pool. Is that from terminal damage? Let's grab him over. This is our Joe. He's just coming through swimming pool now. And the virtual safety car is deployed. The VSC is out, so this could affect pit strategy. Ooh, you saw the you saw the Mercedes car just despawn there. It looks like B Mars did indeed have an off in swimming pool. But if he retired on track and he didn't get terminal damage, then that could be a penalty for him for next race, so we'll have to see. And yeah, the question is, will anyone take advantage of this virtual safety car period to hop onto a fresher set of tires? The soft compound tires can easily go 12 laps at this track. The question is, will anyone try to do that? Does anyone think that is the best option for them? Maybe Sam can? No. Even, on, even though he's on the oldest medium tires of anybody right now, he is staying out of the requirement. Formula Maxim has no reason to pit. He's on relatively fresh hards. Same with Synonymous, same with Krujif, same with Stenner. And the BSC has ended now, and ooh! I thought these two were battling for position, but no, it's just Stenner and his teammate Jamie the G there. And ooh, Jamie the G gets a plate. Corner cut time penalty there. Yeah, I thought they were fighting for position, but no, it is one Haas lapping the other. Stenner, head and shoulders ahead of Jamie the G today. Uh, Jamie currently running in 13th place, some ways behind weighted Zeus in 12th. He's holding on to the final points paying position at the moment, but I'm sure he wants more. As our Vex now, meanwhile, in the, in the other McLaren, he's been having a dreadful race. Had, he spent most of the first half of the race just trying to reconnect to the, to the game. But now, he is back in the points and fighting against Platner for P10. Ooh, he's very fast there, you can tell. Platner just doesn't have as much confidence in the car at the moment. Is he going to send it into Mirabeau? No, he isn't. He's not close enough for that. Ooh, having a peek at the exit of Mirabeau. Not going to try it into the hairpin. It's too tight around there. He's going to try and get the better exit out of the hairpin. Maybe take him in the tunnel. The tunnel is probably the best place for this. Yellow flag at Sector 2 now, and there's another Renault stranded. It's synonymous. Synonymous had a mess up in the Nobel chicane there. But that's going to cost him a ton of time vis-a-vis Formula Max and Formula Max for the rest of the top five. Although Stenner is all quite a ways behind, uh, behind him, so I highly doubt that it'll lose him any sort of track position. As this is our Vex. Ooh, still. Oh, there's big contact. He didn't get behind the tunnel. He didn't get behind the Nobel chicane. And he's just rear ended Platner and Tabak. And that's going to loot. That cost him a lot of front wing there. My gosh, that was just a bit reckless from SSR Vex, let's be honest. And he's going to have to pit. He's going to have to pit, most likely, under the softs. And that is... That might be the end of his hopes for points here. We'll have to see how much pace he has on the soft compound tires. But he's not even going out of the softs. He's going out of the hards. What, what's he done? I know this is an unscheduled pit stop, and you have to switch your tires really quickly in the, in the MFD, but still... Going on to the hards, compared to the softs, is going to be a world of difference at this stage in the race. And yeah, I think that is the nail in the coffin. 
for SSR Vex. I do not think he will come away with points here today on his SSR debut. He is uh, currently nine seconds out of the points, but almost 10 seconds behind Jamie the G. And there's a yellow flag in Sector 3 now, and there's a Renault. There's a Renault. Is that a Renault? Or is that a racing point? I can't, I can't actually tell. It, it was Maestro. Maestro. The Maestro from third place has... I don't know what he's done. He's spun at the exit of Anthony Noakes, it looks like, and he's lost third place to Sam Cannon, and he's lost a whole bundle of time to ten whole dollars. That may have just cost him a podium as Formula Max gets a penalty for speeding in the pit lane. He's pitting onto the soft compound tires. He's got an extra penalty, but he's also got so he's also got the softs, which are just head and shoulders faster than the other tires that everyone else has got right now. So Maxim could still get fastest lap here with, with ten laps to go. I'm not sure who that is cause the yellow flag in sector three. That might be total 420. Yep, it is total 420. He got, apparently he had, made a mistake there in the swimming pool, and he's going to have to make yet another pit stop. Let's take a look Take a look here. Tire stops. Weighted twos has made four stops in this race. This is total 420's fifth pit stop of the race. Just goes to show how brutal this Monaco circuit is to the slightest mistake. This is our Vex has made four stops. Zeus has made four stops. Luki's made four stops now. And you can see everyone in the points who's in the points right now, except for Lugi, has only made one pit. Has only made one or two pit stops. They haven't had to make any unscheduled ones, really. So deal. Lugi and Jamie the G now fighting over P. Benefiting from Vex from the uh, misfortunes of Vex and Total 420. With no Lugi thought about it, but he is not going to send it on that particular occasion, and that might compromise his run out of Portier and through the tunnel. So. Jamie might hold on to this position even longer as total 420 has now made six more stops. <laughs> Sorry about that. That is six and not five, so really, really dreadful day for that Red Bull driver, although $10, his teammate, having a pretty good run of things so far. About 5.1 seconds behind us Star Joe, but also 10 seconds ahead of Sam Ken in third. So it looks like he's going to be on for an easy podium here if he just doesn't make any major mistakes like his teammate has been doing. Uh, Zippin saying, great commentary. Thank you, Zippin. I'm always, I'm always open to feedback. I do tier two here every week, so it's, it's, I like, or it's great that you uh, like my voice, because, oh, there's a mistake. Somebody, is that Sam Ken? No, that's just our Vex. That's Vex. And Vex, who's already in, out of the points in P13, already on the wrong compound attire. He's now going to be well and truly out of the points. Unless one of the guys ahead of him makes a mistake, which, to be fair, is very possible as he cuts Santa Bot super fine there. Jeez. Total 420 makes a seventh pit stop of the race. I don't know what's been going on with him today. It's just, wow, that's, uh, he's going to, he might have used every set of tires in his allocation if that's the case, because I think you only get six sets of tires if there's no practice. If there's no practice sessions set. As he goes on to the medium compound tire. He goes on to nine lap old medium. That's never a very good idea. As Formula Maxim, I, I called him. He was going to set the fastest lap. And he has the fastest slap of a 1 minute 12.1. He's 23 seconds behind the Maestro in fourth, so I'm not sure if he's going to be able to uh, catch up, especially with that 5 second pit lane speeding penalty, but still, he is flying right now, as is synonymous in Renault, who's also pitted onto the soft compound tires. He was a pit stop ahead of center in seventh, so it does make sense for him to do that, so he's going to try and go for fastest slap of the race as well. It is worth one bonus point for anyone who finishes in the top ten. And these guys know it, and they'll be chasing after that point like... Crazy, but this man, SSR Joe, he doesn't need, he doesn't need the fastest lap point because he's going to get the 30 points for for the win here, plus the one point you get for pole position. He's already going to get a huge bag of points here, and uh, judging by the dr current drivers' championship, yeah, he is going to jump. He's going to jump Sam Ken for second in the drivers' championship here, and he's going to. E into 10 whole dollars his championship lead quite significantly. Yeah, he's going to gain eight points on him, it looks like. Although 10 whole dollars still has, is still going to have a pretty good margin. Yeah, if things ended the way they are now, SSR Joe would get 31 points, so he'd get 102 points in total for the season. 10 whole dollars would come home with, uh, we come, he'd come home with 25 points, so. No, actually, Joe is only gaining by six points on 10 whole dollars. So scratch that, my bad. But yeah, still, the championship lead is coming down. As five second, it's a five-second penalty for Synonymous. I don't know what's happened there, but he's retired. 
It's anonymous. It just crashed in Sector 3, and we're going to try and ride on Mortis. Wait, no, he's retired in the pit lane. I have no idea what's happened there. Synonymous was running in P6. He was on for good points, but now he's just uh, he's just out. I, I don't know why he's done that. As there's another yellow flag for a Mercedes. That's AJ Mars making a mistake in the Nobel chicane there. And there's a Renault going slowly now. I think that's... Who is that? I think that was Synonymous. No, Synonymous has retired on track after all. I don't know. I'm, I'm actually kind of confused now. It's right on board with... Not Stenner with Jamie the G. What can he tell us? Nothing. Yeah, I'm not sure where to. I'm not sure where to look here. Oh, there is Synonymous's car. I think. Whoa, that's dangerous. Yeah, that's why you don't retire on track, guys. Especially at a tight, especially at a tight place like Monaco. You're just gonna scare other guys into making mistakes, and that's what happened to GB Sanderson there. Yeah, I guess Synonymous's AI is just looking for a place to retire here. Ooh, Platinum slapped the wall there at the exit of swimming pool. Looks like he just got a bit of a uh, tank slapper on there. But yeah, I'm not sure why Synonymous retired. Maybe he'll enlighten us in Twitch chat. Shout out to all the viewers, Zam says. Hell yes. We do need a shout out for all the guys that are uh, tuning into the stream today. 23 people watching the stream. Those are excellent numbers. Thank you guys for your support. And there's another yellow flag in Sector 3. Three now is who's going slowly in sector three. Nobody. And actually, that puts Vex into the point. So I was wrong. This is that was not the nail in the coffin for Vex. Uh, going onto the wrong compound tire. He has in fact uh, benefited from Synonymous's DNF, and he will now take home one championship point on his first outing in SSR. And he might he might actually get another here because he's got nine lap pressure hard tires than Jamie the G in P11. And I guess Jamie made a mistake, has made a mistake sometime recently, because now Vex is right on the back of him. Is the Haas driver nursing front wing damage? I don't know, because the game isn't showing it, isn't showing us his front wing. Look, I love this camera shot game, but please show me. All right, he's not missing an end play. His total 420 makes what's this? His eighth stop now? How many times has total 420 been in the pits? Like this is actually not seen. This is this is his eighth stop. Wow, yeah, that's uh, it's really not been a good race for the, for the Red Bull driver. He is a whopping four minutes behind the next highest car, AJ Mars in 14th. Yeah, he's three, almost four laps down now. So, things really not going his way today, but uh, for 10 whole dollars, things have been going his way. He's in P2 at the moment, I'm sure he would love the win. But uh, I think he's level with Joe on penalties right now. Let's let's actually check. Actually, no. It's, it's going to take us way too long to scroll through all the stuff in the race director. It's Monaco crying out loud. So let's not. Oh, ten old dollars is going slowly, and the safety car is out. Is that Jamie the G? Who's stranded in swimming pool? No, 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 no. Who's stranded in swimming pool? I think it might be Synonymous's car. Has Synonymous has Synonymous's AI parked in a place that triggered the safety car? I don't know, but that changes the entire complexion of this race. Formula Maxim is coming into the pit lane for soft tires. I'm not sure why. He, he already had better tires than everyone else, but... He's not actually losing any track position. Oh, he's not losing any track position. Never mind. In that case, it's probably a good play. And yeah, penalties are going to play a huge factor here in the, in the end of this race. That's what happens in league racing, generally. Just because... Yeah, there are a lot of places you can cut corners here. Ooh. Scrape the wall there? Did he get front wing damage? I'm not sure. AJ Mars now is retired from the session. So at least that'll be another free position for total 420, I think. But yeah, just five just four or five laps to go here, and the safe the safety car's out. That completely changes the complexion of this race. Is that Stenner coming out of the pit lane? It was Stenner coming out of the pit lane, so Stenner is lapped actually. Stenner has paid for that pit stop. Is he going to be able to overtake the safety car to get back on the lead lap? If not, then Stenner really has no chance of improving his position here. No, I don't think he is. The game has not given him a go the go-ahead to overtake the safety car. So, yeah, not only can Stenner not recover his position and actually try to get P6 or even high go even higher, he's going to act as a buffer car here on the restart between SSR Joe, who you see on the bottom there in the Williams, and Ten Whole Dollars, who you see on the left in the Red Bull. So that's going to make things much harder for Ten Whole Dollars if he's going to try to uh, disrupt SSR Joe's race here. There's going to be another buffer car between uh, 
Tunnel is always Sam Ken. I think that's going to be OTL Lugie. Yeah, it is Lugie. Two buffer cars, actually. So OTL Lugie and Total 420 are both going to be blocking uh, Sam Ken's way, so that's going to hurt his chances of improving his position to P2. What about Maestro? How far behind is Maestro going to be? Maestro is going to have Vex in front of him for company, so that's... Yeah, the field is really bunched up here. So many people have been lapped that the restart is going to be really weird just because of how many people are going to be out of position and everything. Safety cars work really weirdly in this game in that you almost never get the wave around uh, to to overtake the safety car if, you get la if you're a lapped car like you would in real life. So, yeah, that's really unfortunate for anyone looking to take advantage of the safety car to really improve their position. But, uh, yeah, and Total 420 is coming to the pits again? What? Has he gotten front wing damage again? No, I think he's coming into the pits to retire. He served a penalty as well. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Has he just, has he just, has he just retired? I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know anymore. Uh, but Vex getting a time penalty there for warnings. Yeah, there is still plenty to be excited about in this race. There is still the battle for the win. Even if Stenner is going to make it a little more decisive in Joe's favor. Nothing is decided yet in this race. Not even the final points finisher. He could still have Jamie the G overtake weighted Zeus here in the dying laps, or he could just be ahead on penalties. So keep your minds open, folks. Penalties are going to play a huge role. Oh, that's a traffic jam at the ha Lowe's hairpin. Yeah, penalties are going to play a huge role. Oop, Nitro gets a five-second penalty for a severe collision with Vex. Yeah, the and the steward's office is going to play a huge role, too, because some of these penalties that are applied by the game are just super stupid. <laughs> as you, as was probably the case there with Maestro. Usually when it's a severe collision under safety car, it's just a tiny love tap that wasn't even intentional. So, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, everyone's getting s severe penalty or penalties for severe collisions. Like, jeez, what is the... The game's handing out penalties like candy today. I'm not going to lie, but the safety car is in this lap. We're going to go back out front. Oh, no! Center is pulled over. Center is pulled over and let ten whole dollars buy. So that is bad news for SSR Joe because now ten whole dollars is not going to have any buffer cars to deal with. He's going to be right on the back of his championship rival. Joe coming through Rascast now, waiting for the right moment to restart. Formula Max now gets a penalty for a severe collision with Jamie the Jew, although it probably wasn't that severe and didn't cause him any damage. The game still awards it. And two laps shootout now at Monaco for the win of the race. $10 no dollars, not trying anything into Sandoval. Joe getting a very good restart, actually. Find these two are on essentially identical age. Medium compound tires. Sam Ken there is third. Oh, there's Spinala in the background. There is a Spinala. There's yellow flag from Sector 1. SSR Vex is getting punished right now by Platner and others. Oh my gosh, and that's... Yeah, this is a really sloppy restart for the guys further back and down the field. Jesus Christ, this is a... <laughs> that's, that's quite an interesting first lap after the restart. Oh, okay, the weighted Zeus has a ton of front wing damage. That looks like red damage on the left side. That is not going to help him. That might punt him out of the points, actually, considering Jamie the G and Lugie are right behind him. He loses yet more front wing. Bits of front wing flying everywhere today, folks. This is, uh, really a nut this is really a nutty race. Monaco always is. And whole dollars now six ten. Star Joey seems to have kept the gap relatively stable through the penultimate lap, but that, keeping the gap stable is not enough. If he wants to win, he needs to overtake him here on what's going to be the final lap of the race, and he's going to have to do it without the assistance of DRS on the pit straight. As there's a yellow flag now in sector three, that looks like total 420 on the mini map. As Otia Lugi gets a penalty for multiple warnings on corner cutting. 31 viewers here. Thank you guys. This is, I'm pretty sure 31 viewers ties our all-time record for. Uh, stream viewing, so thank you all for your support, and you're in for for an excellent end of the race here. As Otia Lugi has retired, Lugi has retired in the Alfa Romeo, in the Alfa Romeo after having a really legitimate shot at points here. But yeah, he is our fifth retirement of the day, and it's the final lap, last lap shenanigans here at Monaco. And Sam Ken is now right on the back of ten whole dollars. He has the pace despite being on older rubber. It's ten whole dollars going to send it into the Nobel chicane. That's his last real chance. I don't, I don't think he's close enough. I don't think he's close enough. I don't think he's going to risk it. He's still going to have the championship lead either way, no matter what happens here. He just needs to play it safe, unless Joe makes a major mistake here. He 
They didn't get the best run off of Novell Chicane, Joe did. Ooh, but I think Joe got the advantage there through, through Tobacco and now through a swimming pool. It's gonna be close. Raskast dive bomb question mark. He thinks about it. No, it's not gonna work. He could still get ahead on penalties though. That's his last hope here. Does not spin off Anthony Anthony Nogues and SSR Joe, at least on track, is gonna come home to win the SSR Tier 2 Monaco Grand Prix and that result will stand. In fact, it's actually ten whole dollars getting hurt by penalties. As Sam Ken comes home. Sam Ken in the McLaren comes home P2. Ahead of Ten Hole Dollars, who still stays on the podium in third, followed by OTL Krujin. And the Alfa Romeo, he just stayed out of penalty trouble, and he's leapfrogged a lot of people, like from all the way from ninth or tenth up to up to fourth. So excellent for him. Formula Maxim, despite his smattering of pit lane speeding penalties, is going to get P5 and the fastest lap of the race. Maestro is going to get P6, followed by Stenner in 7th, GB Sanderson in 8th, Platner in 9th, then Jamie the G, SSR Vex, after all his travails, and Weighted Zeus in the Williams. Whew, what a race. That was chaotic. That was extremely chaotic. That was, like, Monaco really is a chaotic evil track, and that was a, a great race to, to exhibit that. Stenner actually hasn't technically come across the line yet. Apparently he was on the lead lap when... Uh, when Joe crossed the line to finish the race. Maybe he unlapped himself at the restart. I'm not quite sure. But he is going to finish now to come home at P7. And those are the final results. Great race, says Platner. Yeah, it was an excellent race. Congrats on your points, Platner. It seems like your teammate just didn't have the same luck as Jamie the G gets driver of the day. And honestly, I'd have to agree with that. Um, yeah, he went from the very back of the grid, 18th, up to P11 to get points. Now, uh, we're going to invite these guys to the party after the podium celebration for some podium finisher interviews. So don't leave just yet. Do not leave just yet. We have more in store for you as they come out onto the podium. All right, time to get our guys in for interviews. All right, Sam Ken's just in the party now. Please tick your box while we're waiting for the other two. And Joe's in the party. And we're just waiting for 10 whole dollars now. We're just waiting for 10 whole dollars for interviews here. Now ELF1 is in chat saying, how do you get penalties around Monaco? Well, the Novel Chicane, Sandevot, they're pretty easy to cut, to be fair. And the Lowe's Hairpin, if you just completely jump over the bricks. And 10 whole dollars is the party now, so if you guys could just double check the boxes are checked. Yep. All right, wonderful. So, we'll start with our race winner, SSR Joe. First of all, congratulations on the win. And you seem to just have the best ultimate pace out of anybody today. What what did you do to prepare the race in particular that may may have given you this edge? Um. Well, I knew that at the beginning of the uh, second stint, everyone on the mediums that uh, pitted before me was pushing really hard. So, I knew I'd have the better tires at the end because I wasn't really pushing at all. Mm -hmm. And um, Sam and Ten Whole Dollars, of course, your positions were swapped due to penalties. Uh, did either of you know that you guys would that you guys would be that one of you had more penalties than the other? No, no. I, I, had, I, I was racing normally, but as soon as the last safety car came out, I thought I'd stay at least within three seconds, just in case. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Also, I'm curious, is um. What happened there with uh, Stenner in the Haas? Uh, I remember the safety car restart. He was between Joe and Ten Whole Dollars, but then then he backed away for some reason. 
Yeah, he was like ghosting in me as I was trying to make a run, so I had to back off. But I think he affected Joe too, so it was really um, a problem. I'm not sure. I didn't see a Haas. I don't think. Yeah. I know he overtook and... me though, because he was on softs. He was on the quicker tires, so he overtook me, but. All right, so this is for all three of you. Uh, pit strategy. How was it affected by the various um, incidents, let's call them, throughout the race? And do you, uh, think, it, do you think all the virtual safety cars and stuff? Do you think you guys think it helped you or or not? I didn't. I didn't want to pit under any of the safety cars. Uh, I got my front wing knocked on lap one. I pitted after lap one, and then the first safety car came out. And on the restart, I got my front wing knocked again. So I had to pit again, and that was all my pit stops for the race. Um, for uh -huh. me, what about um, you guys? I ended the race at like 50% on the tires, so I don't think it really affected me that much. I mean, I would have been in the window to be fine at the end of the race without all the VSCs. Uh -huh. uh, what about you, Ten? What happened for you with uh, the pit strategy? And the, it really didn't affect stuff? me. I still put it on the same lap, like 11, 12. 12. Yeah, and... Final thing, uh, I guess the other the other drivers could benefit from this too. For anyone trying to get better at Monaco, you guys were clearly the most consistent today, all of you. What guys? What advice would you give to anyone looking go to get it. better at this track? Just, oh, just literally go for it. Find your, find, your find your limits. I guess just keep it clean because a bunch of people are going to be pinning for damage and you'll end up in the points. So as long as you keep the tires alive, the you can. Uh, you can keep a uh, pretty good pace up without having to struggle through the low speed. Yeah, certainly. Well, thank you guys for your time. Again, congratulations on all of your uh, respective finishes, and I hope hope to see you guys next week at Baku. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, that's all for to that's all for today. Uh, actually, it it isn't. So, here's the thing. We are done with Tier 2 for the day. Uh, make sure to tune in every Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 10 p.m. British Time for more Tier 2 action. Again, every single weekend. We're going rapid fire. Um, but don't tune in, or don't tune out now either. Stay here for the next half an hour or so, and you'll get SSR Tier 1. We go back to back. It's every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and midnight British Time. That is Tier 1 that's coming up pretty soon. That'll be commentated by our uh, one of our Tier your two drivers here, AJ Mars 7, and uh, you guys should totally stick around for that. But until then, I.